use this I remember when formula. In this episode, we are going to address the question, how do I capture memories in a family record? My name's Doug Andrew, and I love sharing stories and empowering people, families, business owners, on how to capture those experiences, those memories. I call them I remember whens, so that future generations uh, down the road, future employees will be able to learn and be able to laugh and cry and know what made you tick. And so this motivated me to start having I Remember When retreats with my siblings, with my children and grandchildren, with our employees. It is so powerful. And sure enough, I have a tool that will help you do this. And this is a game changer because so many times when we gather together with friends and family and we start in on reminiscing about the time when uh, Emron did a face plant in the petunias at the bobsleds at Disneyland, or when this happened, or when I uh, swallowed uh, my, my tooth that, that popped out, or when this happened or that happened, we laugh we cry, but we don't write it down. And then all of a sudden uh, we have these secondhand memories and we don't get the accurate story. I would like to capture those straight from the horse's mouth. And so we purposely plan time on our family vacations to capture the I remember wins. And we use this form to facilitate that process. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So I'm going to share with you the power behind a system or a method that captures I remember when memories, especially when you're on a retreat or a vacation. We do this with our siblings uh, every year and it's just 24 hours. And uh, my sisters, my sisters-in-law, I have one brother, but he has passed away from a car accident in 1999. But there's 10 of us now, and we gather together every year for 24 hours. They come for dinner. After dinner, we go around and share one I remember when memory, a total of 10 after dinner. Now, they really only take three or four minutes, but because it jogs all kinds of other memories, we laugh and we cry, and, it, and we also take notes because it also jogs our memories of additional stories. And we just keep coming up with more and more and more. In five years, we gathered 150, do the math. We do 10 after dinner on a Sunday night when we gather together. Monday morning, we have breakfast and we go around and share 10 more. We have lunch, share 10 more. I capture 30 every year. In five years, I had a book of 150. Their sons and daughters, my siblings, sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, they actually love reading these stories at Sunday dinner and so forth. And these are the things that if you don't write them down, they will go to your grave with you. They'll be trapped in here or in here. So this is the method you use to get them out, captured and uh, preserved forever. And it's a simple form to help you do this. And it's called I Remember When. These could be experiences, and across the top, I put down maybe where you learned life lessons, a, the uh, value of honesty, or work ethic, punctuality, wisdom, family values, failure versus success, loss of a loved one, religious or spiritual experiences, marriage, uh, health, moments of freedom, there's all kinds of moments that you have experiences in your life, way more than you realize you do. And so what I usually do is email out this form to my siblings uh, the week before we get together. Sometimes they want it a month or two before. And they look at this and I will tell them, you know what, I'm going to come prepared with three embarrassing moments. I'm going to come with three of my favorite holiday memories. I'm going to come with three uh, close calls where I nearly died. And that sort of motivates many of them. And so they go through and they fill out this portion of the form. So let me describe this to you. On the left are the key ideas. 
Very simple. I'll read it to you. Who? So who was involved in this I remember when memory? Uh, a grandparent, a parent, a sibling, a spouse, a child, a friend, uh, a peer, a co-worker, a role model, extended family. Then you go to when. So when did it happen? Uh, try to be accurate with the year, uh, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, time of day, time of year, uh, the decade it was in, if you don't know the exact date. And then you go where? So home, was it in the workplace? Was it uh, at entertainment, at a movie theater, or uh, an amusement park? Uh, vacation events and restaurants, family members home, uh, in a vehicle? And then last, what? Was it schooling? Was it jobs, vacation, holidays, hobbies, career, sports, entertainment, travel, uh, significant events? So this is the who, when, where, and what. Over on the right-hand side, you are writing down the details to those four categories. So you simply write the notes, just bullet points. You don't have to be detailed, write it out exact. The best I remember when stories come off the cuff. So as you write the notes down here at the very bottom of the front of this form, you write down the lessons learned from that experience. They're usually like, you know, a moral to the story or the lesson you learned. Like I remember one time I sneaked out when I was sick and my parents said, don't you go hunting. I got a new shotgun and, and we had an orchard across the way and uh, you could hunt for pheasants. And they said, don't go out and hunt your sick. Well, as soon as they left, I was so anxious to go out with this shotgun and I went across the street and a pheasant flew up and I shot and I hit it. But I knew if I went home with a pheasant, they would know I had disobeyed. So I went home and I felt so guilty and I thought, wait a minute, what's worse? Wasting the pheasant? I need to be honest. So I went back to get the pheasant and a dog was just finishing up eating it. So I had to go back home and still tell my parents that I had disobeyed. Now, I learned the value of obeying my parents and also telling the truth. And also, if I did, that I shouldn't waste wildlife. We could have been able to use that meat, but thank goodness a dog got it. But see, these are the little memories that sometimes you, you learn a lesson. I've had many lessons I've learned. So you write that down at the bottom. And then this side of this form will help you as a memory jogger. So let me go through some of the things here that will help you decide what memories that you want to record the next time you do it. So when we started capturing I Remember When Memories, it was on our family retreats with a purpose. And every odd year, we would go to Maui. And our children would pay their way, by the way. That's explained in my book, Entitlement Abolition. But uh, that used to be on Monday night. And I would assign each child three I Remember When Memories. And I said, this is uh, no more than 750 words. It must fit on one sheet of paper if you're going to type it up. But most of the time, they were handwriting it as teenagers. And uh, later on, then I would record it and transcribe it. But then later on, they would put it on a thumb drive. When I do it with my siblings, they must come with a digital version of it. Sometimes there's an episode that takes more than one page. And so you divide it up into different lessons that were learned or different episodes. This helps to think through what I remember when memories, because when I started doing this with my siblings, they said, well, I can't think of any more than three. We're going to come here every year for five or six years. I go, no, you will think of many when we start sharing. So this example shows on the left, hey, I want you to write down three that come to your mind that are comical. This is very funny or comical. Over here, family holidays or traditions. Write down three of your favorite holidays or family traditions. How about embarrassing moments? Oh, I have a lot of those, more than three. Uh, how about uh, back in my day, we used to uh, walk to school six miles uh, uphill both ways, blah, blah, blah. So back in my day, this is how we used to do stuff. Down here, you have uh, the close calls in life where you could have checked out, you could have been killed. Uh, how about this one? Recognitions and accolades and awards that you won. So what you're doing is you have categories and then you write down three in each. And just this side of the form, 
gave all of my siblings five years worth of I remember wins in less than 15 minutes by filling out this form. And then they came up with a lot more ideas than that. So the key point is here, if you do not have a system to capture these memories and then write them down, if you don't write them down, ask the questions, look at this, say it off the cuff. With today's technology, you simply push record on your smartphone and whether it's audio or video, or you do a selfie and you have a little inexpensive selfie stick, just share the I remember when memory. And I assure you, your kids and grandkids, people forever will read and reread, watch and rewatch, listen and re-listen to those because they are about you and what made you who you were. And when you learn the value of hard work or why you fell heavily in love with your spouse and some of the greatest lessons you learned and the failures and how you overcame them, they will not read your trust. So I've counseled a lot of people and I asked them, how many of you have a trust? Two thirds of an audience raises their hands. And then I say, I assure you, your kids will never read that document except one page that says how much they get. But I can give you one sheet of paper and it will ask you questions and you can push record and your posterity for generations will read and reread, watch and rewatch, listen and re-listen because they won't read your trust. This is what they really want to know about you. So use the I Remember When worksheet so that you can capture it and you don't go to your grave with those stories trapped in here or in here. So this is such a powerful topic. I have an entire chapter in this book, Entitlement Abolition, about this very concept. So if you would like a free copy of this book, because this is not about me, I don't care about making any money on the book. I will gift it to you free. I'll pay for the book. Uh, you pay $5.95 shipping and handling because I require skin in the game. If my own kids wanted one, they will uh, pay to get a copy of the book if they're away. I want you to have a copy of this. So I'll pay for the book, you pay for the shipping, and I'll send one out to you free. You can also get an audio version or a digital version for a nominal uh, fee. Also, I have an 18 hour masterclass, but it's in this book that you can learn about these concepts like I remember wins and how we do this on our family vacations. How do you get this book? You go to entitlementabolitionbook.com. Entitlementabolitionbook.com and there, you'll have the option to be able to get a copy of the book in hard copy format. Or if you choose, you can get an audio version or a digital version, or you can even uh, enroll in a master class.